We have a lot of platforms, experts, the marketing, videographers, lawyers come to it. Uh, our next one is in two weeks, so I'm kind of doing a little plug there. So it's a free event, so definitely uh, stop by. Basically, this is a traditional way of kind of thinking about fundraising. So if you're a small business you, over here, and usually 99% of the way businesses get money is going to a bank. And how does the bank get money? The bank gets money from your friends and family who, who gives them for savings. And that's how banks traditionally make billions of dollars being this middleman. And the middleman basically, they give back to their Investors, you can pick it up, one percent of, of interest, and they're charging small businesses, you know, five, six percent, and they're making that big spread, and they've been profitable. But this thing, this system, kind of stopped working in the last couple of years. You know, since the recession, a lot of small businesses couldn't get loans at banks. You know, banks have a huge overhead, and it's not profitable for them to give ten thousand dollar loans, fifteen thousand dollar loans, and they keep going to higher and higher businesses who want, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollar loans because of huge overcast. And at the same time, um, so these small businesses can't get financing from, from banks. And these people are, are kind of getting tired of getting one percent interest back from the banks. So they want to give directly to the business. And this is what crowdfunding is. So if you take one idea from today's topic is crowdfunding is reducing the middleman 
Now, improving the transactional costs and connecting investors directly to people who need money. Right? And this works in different schemes all, all together. I want to talk about music, um, where we are music artists, we go directly to advanced upon race, to movies, to books potentially as well. So, just right here. So the whole point is we remove the middleman and people have a say where the money goes. And that is crowdfunding. And usually it's done through a platform or a website. So I'll be using platform to change things and websites. And there's other benefit, benefits. Besides the financial benefits, right, you just, so one is you value it as a market. So you value it as, if you're doing something new, you can ensure, hey, our customers will like this. You can do a crowdfunding campaign, and if you're successful, this, this can show the rest of the world like, hey, this is something that people need. It's a great way to acquire customers, right? especially the early adopters who want to be the first one in everything. Right? And, and these early adopters, they love the product that go on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, and they'll spread the word for you. So it's free marketing in that sense. And as you acquire these people, you can talk to them directly. So a lot of these sites I can show Pixar before is you can go and get feedback and they can say, hey, we like different color. So you can interact with them. But also you can do you can do a lot of research by doing different rewards. So rewards are where you offer back to these factors. So for example, one company, um, they're offering a thing, uh, some like a cleaning utensil with different colors. And one color, the yellow color really stood out versus blue or red. So they knew, hey, blue will lunch with the yellow color, and forget about these yellow colors. So by offering different parts, it, it's the best way to research because people pay with their money. Um, so the biggest example, what really put crowdfunding on the map, is this. Who have you heard of Pebble by? Uh, by raise your hands. Oh, wow. So you guys know? Okay. All right, so this is what really put crowdfunding on the map. Because after this campaign, Pretty much everybody who didn't know about crowdfunding heard me about crowdfunding. And that, this is what kind of got me started as well. Uh, it was about two years ago, and so far it's the biggest campaign on Kickstarter. But two years, no one has beat that yet. So this is um, it's a really good, good story because um, it's a bunch of guys in their early 20s, and they had this idea to build a smartwatch. And they went to a venture capitalist, and they got turned down. So they spent a couple of years building it, they couldn't get financing, and they realized, no, let's do a Kickstarter project. They put a Kickstarter project, and I think they charge it uh, to like $200 for the watch, and they asked for $100,000 to so make it happen. And they got $10 million from what, 60, almost 69,000 people, right? After this, the VC came to them and said, hey, we want to put money into you. <laughs> you know, so they kind of, it turned around. It, and, uh, it really put, you know, before this, it was all small projects, and people realized, no way, I can't raise millions of dollars doing Kickstarter. And this is a product that didn't even exist. This is a product that pre-sold. This, this is their idea that they're selling. So they value it as a market for smartwatches, and now everybody is doing it. Samsung's doing it, Apple's doing it, to do it, Google's doing it. Um, you know, they, they acquired customers. They acquired 69,000 customers, and this had the biggest media outlets. So it was free marketing for them. You know, this this success in every single aspect. Um, and they delivered the product. It was about a year or so, a little late. Usually, I think 75% of Kickstarter projects are late. Uh, but um, they delivered it, and people are happy. Uh, and now they're raising more money, and they're not real to build big company. Uh, I assume pretty well. Any questions? There's big questions. So they, they effectively they also sold 68,929 watches? Well, there's more. different types of rewards, right? right? Okay. So those different types, um, I mean, I can look it up right now, but this one is, you know, for $300, you get the watch. If you get $20, you get like a t-shirt or something. Okay. So no, so they didn't really sell 69,000 watches. It was probably a little less, but Somewhere you can see. Around. You can go to Kickstarter right now. Uh, type in Pebble Watch Kickstarter, and you'll see it. You, you can take it to the broker, you can see the video, how they did it. Um, and how many rewards and how many people actually pay for each reward. Uh, question? 
Yeah, I guess this reward should be on the subject matter, or it should be like anything, right? You just mentioned like t-shirt. I mean, they're selling watches. Right. I mean, the best way that what, what I think where it really stands out the reward based crowdfunding is the pre-sale. I think that's that's the best example. Is um, the way Kickstarter got started uh, is uh, the guy basically had an idea for a movie. So you know, I need to want to make a movie, and it's going to cost me ten thousand dollars. But I'm not sure if people will want to see this movie, right? So basically, he said, hey, if you give me $10 now, it's a ticket for when I make the movie. And, uh, but actually, he didn't raise the $10, so he didn't make the movie. But it's a great way to, basically, you pre-selling, um, you, you have funding for a project. And that's where Kickstarter is all about. Like. If you don't raise the money, you can't do the project. And then what people get is the movie, the item, uh, the musicians, the music. So there's something to do with the project itself. So, but it could be also experiences. So if you have unique experiences, it works really well. Um, I think I'm going to mention later on, for example, um, Veronica Mars crowdfunding a movie. Uh, she raised $5 million. The biggest reward for that campaign was for $10,000, you can start in the movie. So if you're a fan mm -hmm. of Veronica Mars, you know, how fun is that? You can be in the movie with your idol. I mean, if, you, if you're an expert and people think, hey, this you people know me as an expert in that thing, then you can offer this kind of presentation services that would be for them. Um, so, I mean, it could work, essentially. But, I mean, I think if you be creative, uh, for example, um, if you're doing some, you know, like a, uh, my friend did a, he's a sausage trucker. So, instead of, he wanted to, as a reward, he said, yeah, I'll give you a private lesson. Well, I'll come to you and I'll teach you at your home, right? I think if you do create a unique kind of item, I think it, it's, it, it'll be good. It's better for you and it's better for the individual because if you want to kind of But we can talk more afterwards. You know, answer that a little more. Yes. I, I was looking around at Kickstarter and I thought, ah, yep. there are tens of things of thousands of ideas on there. And I'm kind of confused or missing point on how so many people not only about why people are actually giving money. Because it seems counterintuitive. And they get money for say so. Exactly. So so well you, you is there a profile of the type of people that are home sifting through millions of profiles of businesses and deciding how do they even find the one they want and what encourages them to get money to? I mean the, mo the most thing is you should bring people into the community. You don't you know you shouldn't think hey I'll launch my project and people will come and give me money. Uh, I mean last people I talk to think that way, it doesn't work that way. You are responsible for being a good man. The only thing Kickstarter can do is maybe they can feature you, improve you, and once you have some momentum, other people can say, oh, this one weighs you know, 50%, then they'll jump in if they like your idea. Uh, but you, you should never depend on the platform to bring you, uh, bring you people to the platform. So you're, you're responsible for uh, And there's different ways to do it. You gotta build a crowd, and you just, I'll, I'll talk So let me get started, we got, we got lots of materials here. So some of the challenges basically is, uh, one is IP protection, because once you go live, you, your project is exposed to the whole world. So if you have some IP there, or some you know, patent or trademark that you don't want other people to steal, you have to be careful, you make sure you go talk to uh, a lawyer to protect it. Or if you're really afraid of something to steal your idea, just don't do it. Uh, you need to have a crap, that's not a thing, right? So if you build it, it won't come. It doesn't work that way, you know, yeah, you really need to bring people to it. Um, I'll mention a few, but basically the magic number that a lot of platforms that's what say is 30%. That means you should bring 30% of your funding before you actually launch your campaign. So if you're raising $30,000, you should have 10,000 pre-funded from your initial crowd. 
you know, because, I mean, the, the theory behind it is people don't be the first one in. People don't know you. They don't want to put you in those zero funding, right? But if they see there's at least 30%, then it would be more likely they're going to, be, to give it. Um, so that's, that's, and that's kind of been shown by a lot of stats that if you reach 30%, you like 90% chance of succeeding in Kickstarter and then you go. So those are numbers from the platform. Third is you need to be extrovert. So you need to be, um, you shouldn't be afraid to email people. Go ahead and email people about the project, your family, your friends. If you're afraid to stand out and kind of get stuff to people, then it's not, you know, that's not for you. Um, and basically you'll be exposed to all your friends and family out there. So you really need to be comfortable with that. And a lot of people are not comfortable with A lot of people launch a project and they don't email anybody. They think, hey, I'll just launch it secretly and people come in and give me money to buy my normal mail. And if I fail, I'm normal mail. It doesn't work that way. You really need to go to all your, that's, that's the whole power of social media. The reason you, know, you have Facebook, LinkedIn, is you can actually tell them to, hey, I'm raising money, they can come to your project and they can support you. So you really need to be, not to be afraid to fail. And by the way, 50% of projects do fail. Uh, over 50%. Because people don't take enough steps in preparation to actually build a very successful project. And fourth is trust. And this is important because traditionally when you're asking for money, you meet people one on one. You see them, you know who they are. When you give money on Facebook, I mean, I mean Kickstarter and on the internet, you have no idea who these people are. Right? And if you have a business trying to raise money, you have to build this trust saying, hey, I'm an authentic person, I am an expert. I do, and that's why, for example, for me, I did my credentials in the beginning. And you have to build trust, and you have to say, hey, I, I, I'm a real person, I, you know, you connect with Facebook, and you know, you're all the social media, it's a great way to do it. Um, but you need to build trust with the people who give you money. And, and that's, most people, when you do this video, you have the person who's raising money, and so he's speaking in the video, because he's saying, hey, this is me, you can see me face to face, I'm a real individual, uh, I'm not going to take your money right one away. Because right now at Kickstarter, there's no government regulation. If you, if you give someone the money, they can just take the money and go on vacation. And there, there's nothing you can do about it. Right? Because there's no government, no one's overseeing it. Uh, and it's just basically all kind of trust system. And there's going to be fraud, too. Right? That, that's, it's going to happen. And there's been some cases of fraud. And that's, as, as you're a small business trying to raise money, that's something you need to think about. How do I first say that I'm authentic? And how do I prove that I can deliver on the product that, that I say I can deliver? So as you give your money, there's different types, there's different areas where you can give back to your support, right? There's donations, where you simple thank you, reward base, where it's a good service, lending, which is traditional banks where you give back interest on the principal, equity where you give part of the company, and royalty, which is a new one, which is basically revenue share. You give part of your future earnings. Um, so as you're starting out, so let's go over some